Good morning, Misfits. It is the last day of the month, April 30th, episode 435. I had the numbers. Yeah. Uh, details are important. And numbers are important, like if they're on my check or what I'm paying somebody. But sometimes I get them messed up for my own episode. So I think you're going to see the background 435 twice. Anyways, here we are. It's Thursday, end of the month. <clears throat> Uh, let's go ahead and send out our messages of gratitude, of joy, of love, of respect, of honor, of blessings. Uh, I can tell you, uh, I can see uh, a shift that's happening in the world uh, because of you all. And the world I look at is my world. And that's, that's the only world I can see. No matter whether I look on the news, that's my world, or I look in the other room where my bride is sleeping, that's my world. Or I go upstairs and I see Mason, that's my world. The whole reality is, is that your entire world exists in your own frame of reference. What is it that you want to do? What is it that needs to get done? Usually in our profession, the end of the month is a big push and we turn things on and we try to move the needle a little bit more. We're this close to a rank, we're this close to a goal, we're this close to a fill in the blank. I believe we all have to have goals. I believe we all need to have goals. I believe we need to have uh, goals that have an accountability to them. See, we become accountable, many of us, many of us become accountable to the end of the month for, for a rank. Not really for a reason, or the reason is, is to create income. But the challenge is, so let's, let's do a Wayne Dyer. Let's change the way we look at things and the things we look at change. If we are running for rank today, it means we're running for recognition today, which means we want to be able to say we did it, which usually is inspired by somebody else who is running for rank, running for recognition. So they can say they did it. It's rare that I hear it's not that I haven't, but it's rare that I hear somebody saying, let's make this day the start of somebody's best May ever. Because the person you're bringing in, the person that you're wanting to, you to join you in business today, the person you're going to inspire, motivate, move, send messages to, ask them to really take a look at it, ask them to support you. Is it not to give them the best May ever in their life? Or is it to help you finish up the best April ever for you? Look, look at the philosophy, everybody started two days ago in this, a lot of people started two days ago. Good morning, Mungabe, Davis Mungabe. Good morning, my brother. Everybody started two or three days ago, sharing and, and getting ready and looking at numbers and, and looking at how many more do I need for this and how many more do I need for that. It's important. It is important. When you look at your bank account and you look at your monthly bills, you, you, should have more, you should have more numbers in one area than you do in the other. I get it. I get it. What if, what if, what if the conversation were, what if you spoke to somebody and said, I got a question for you. Has this been your best April ever? It may, maybe it was. I know it's been one of the, the better Aprils for me in 54 years. Out of my 54 Aprils, this has been a good one. The question is, 
is has it been good for your people? Has the, have the people in your world <clears throat> struggled? Not in your business world, not in your in your in your company. Have the people in your world struggled? And have you had prospecting modalities that were prospecting more towards their current level of success or their current level of fear? This is a great time for us. I, I, I'll be the first one to say it. This is an amazing time for us because all of that, it's one of those things. It's, it's a pyramid. It's all of the objections that we couldn't deal with. That it was hard for us to have a, a comeback. Have gone out the window forever, forever. If somebody says, ever says again, it's one of those things uh, you're, I can't believe you do that. I can't believe this is, this is one of those things that you do. Th that excuse has gone forever. Logically, logically, it has gone forever around the world. Nobody can use that expression anymore. Can they? They can't. The challenge is, is can you come, can you come to a person with your heart and literally have a conversation that will allow them to give up that old thought. See, a lot of times when we, when we go look for a person, when we go look to have a conversation with a person, good morning, Bahamas. Good morning, Leo. Good morning, Vach. When you go to look to, spawn, to enroll somebody, Many of us, many of us are going to, we would love to get the, the big guy. We'd love to get somebody that has people on their team. We'd love to get somebody who has some experience. Hey, Kyle, Kyle good morning from the Bahamas too. We'd love to get somebody with experience. We'd also, we'd also love to get somebody that is brand new and is really, really excited. But let me ask you this. If you were going to plant something and you were going to plant a replant a 30-year-old tree or a brand new seed, which one's going to take more effort? Which one do you have to watch over more? It's kind of a trick question. Because the answer is both. One takes an awful lot more work to plant. One takes a lot more work to come to life. Sometimes people aren't willing to dig the hole big enough to allow somebody who has got community to come into your business. Sometimes we think we can plant that we can plant the new seed too deep. The challenge is, is that every time a prospect, every time a new business partner, every time a new friend comes into your business, the reality is, Jim Rohn's words, the birds will get some, the birds will get some, the birds. So what's the soil today? Today's the end of the month. What's the soil you're going to use today to build your business? If it's any different than the second of the month or the 15th of the month, you've got to ask, what kind of a gardener are you? Is today the day we throw a whole bunch of fertilizer on it and we, we want to really get things going and we really, we, we, we get out of our own way and we have conversations that are different than any, any other time of the month. Maybe, I understand, I understand. If, 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 if you happen to hit the next rank and it changes your income, you deserve it. So 
So here's the question. Can you keep this momentum going on Monday or on Friday and then Saturday and Sunday? Are you going to take the weekend off? If people are important now and if, and if conversations are important now and, and you know, maybe you had 100, 200 people come into your business every day, but today there's going to be three or 400 because everybody pushed, what happens on Friday? Everybody takes a break. So here's the tough question. Aren't the people who are still waiting on you, aren't the people who are still struggling? Are they not important on Friday? Are they not important on Saturday and Sunday? And you'll say, well, I'll, I'll get back to it on Monday. Whew. Man, we went till midnight. Man, and we got the last one signed up and we did it. I'd ask yourself, find that energy, find that passion and start Friday morning just as early as you can doing the same thing. When your business changes from a calendar to an accounting, to an accountability, to a commitment, doesn't matter what day it is. Doesn't matter what day it is. Doesn't matter what time it is. There's somebody on their knees right now praying for you, hoping that you show up today, hoping that you show up with a plan they hadn't heard before, with a passion they've not heard before. Because somebody who's hurting right now doesn't really care what day it is. Somebody whose thing they put authority in has gone away and may never come back. Because what's going to happen here in the next 15, 20 days with things starting to open and unopen and us maybe hear about more cases and a, and a new hotspot pops up here of, 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 of uh, people who are get, get COVID. It's going to happen. And then the fear starts all over again. I'm going to ask you to find a way to be strong. Find a way to have a conversation that allows their own enthusiasm, their own God within to wake up, to let them know they're in, they can be in control, to let them know they have authority if they choose to take it. The end of the month doesn't mean the end of your effort. A lot of companies, a lot of companies will inspire their field to do their auto ships in the first 10 days of the month. Why? Why would they do that? To create some activity. Sometimes they'll have specials that will only run the first 10 days of the month. Why? Because they know that their volume, if <laughs> if this is a calendar, first week, second week, the volume goes up a little bit, goes up a little bit, and that's auto ships. But from the 15th on, it goes crazy. It goes crazy. Now, I, I've heard of companies having their, their biggest days, their biggest days mid-month this past month. Maybe your company had its biggest day, biggest week of commissions. That excites me, but what happens is, is that if it takes a global pandemic to increase the sales of a company, there's only one or two things that's going on there. Either people are, people are awakening to new news or it's out of fear. harsh statement. I get it. So the challenge is, is what happens when the fear goes away? What happens when the motivator goes away? Does your team have enough motivation to stay? Have they been, have they been building with the right intention? Because you'll find out next month. 
when things start to open and new cases start to pop up on the news because they'll be watching the news and maybe it might be in their area if they're in a metropolitan area. And then you're going to he hear this whole conversation. Be prepared for the whole conversation of they should have done this and they shouldn't have done that and they're no good and this and we're going to create a whole new level of polarization at an emotional level. And if, you're, if your teams don't have a story that's strong enough to see through that thick, to see through that ick, there might be some challenges in your organizations. So I would encourage you to prepare, to prepare for what's coming. <clears throat> More stress is coming. More unknown is coming. And it may be at a whole new level. Because now we thought we were kind of at normal and people aren't paying attention and aren't so key, keyed into the, to the numbers of this, that, or the other. It's, 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 now like, it's, it's now like listening to a war that's being fought someplace else if it's not affecting you. Can you be the person today and every day? Can you be the person that says... I got your back. I got your back. How many of the, the new people that came into your business that are wanting to do your business, how much do you know about them? Do you know the, the McKay 66? Have you answered the 66 questions on that form? Maybe 10 of them, 20 of them, 30 of them? Do you know the people who are in your organization or do you just know that they're in Tommy's group or Sally's group? Good morning, Brittany. If that was a, it would seem like it was a, a okay, message. Hello. Good, good morning. Yeah, I sound crazy and like everybody in my house is asleep, but no, so quick question because it's so crazy. I woke up super late and I got on the call. Hey, everybody. <laughs> um, I got on the call and we were talking about strength. And I don't know we're talking about strength. I don't know like, why we're talking about strength. Because obviously I was like, hang on, hang on. You're, 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 the signal or something's a little garbled or. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh. So you were talking about um, strength, but I don't know why I said someone, and this is so crazy, right? Because I was just talking to um, one of my team members yesterday, and I was just telling her how um, personal development has helped me to um, help other people, you know, like, because I need to be well equipped when people start coming to me with, you know, just problems and stuff like that. So I didn't know it was going to be tested so quickly. Um, so someone literally just texted me right now, and I just want to make sure that I'm like saying the right thing to her, for her, the things that she needs to hear, and you're so great at this. Um, but basically, she just texted me, and um, she was basically saying like how she's fed up, she's at her wit's end, and I don't know if she's talking about for real, but she sends me like a picture of like a busted windshield, and then she's going on to say, um, talk about how, like, in her relationship, um, he's been abusing her and, like, cheating on her and, like, have, like, a secret outside baby on her. Um, talking about how he, like, put her in the hospital and stuff and how um, she called the police on him. So, um Ha ha, little no secret. Like, I literally just went through the same thing. Like, when was this? No, this was just at the end of last year, like November, right? I just went through the same thing. So, I was just trying to see, like, what could I say to her? Um, like, what would Sean say? Well, first of all, I, I, I would seriously ask her, and I, would, and I would move from text to voice, and I would have a conversation with her. 
to ask her, first of all, is she okay in this moment? Is, is she in a place that's safe enough for her to stay in, right? Physically, environmentally, right? Our personal reality makes up our personality. And if not, figure out somewhere, somehow to get to a safe place. And then, and then the awareness starts because if that, if, if that text is all what we all heard, there's a state of shock and adrenaline that's still running through that body. And she can't hear anything. When you're in that state, you can't hear anything other than the fear that you're in. And this is a challenge for everybody because this, the, the level of fear that you described is no different than the prospect sitting across from you. They just use different words. They just use different words. This was used. This is two things. This is a, a cry for help, a cry for paying attention, not a cry for attention. So I would have a conversation and say, first of all, are you safe? And then the next thing is then I would get on the phone with her and I would listen. I would listen. You've, you've had the experience. What did it take for you to get through it? And then the question is, here's the challenge, folks. And I didn't know we were going here this morning, but here's the challenge. The biggest challenge that we have when we go to help somebody like this, if we jump in that hole, is to help them get out, period. Not talk about how many times we've been in the hole, not talk about how many times the hole sucks, not talk about how sucky the hole is. If you're going to jump in that hole, you've got to get out. Now, I don't know if any of you are lifeguards, but one of the first things they teach you is that when you go to save a victim that's drowning, what's the biggest fear? What's the biggest fear when you go to save somebody who's drowning that sees you coming to save them? They'll drown you too. They will drown you too. And this is the challenge with too many people who want to help people and the both of them drown right there in front of you. They don't come up with a solution. They don't come up with an action. They don't choose joy over misery. So this, be very aware that it would be fair to say, it's, it's an assumption on my part, and we all know what an assumption is, that right now she's not in a state of joy. And everybody listening is going to say, how is it possible that she could be in joy? Listen, it's not as bad as she thinks it is. It could be worse, couldn't it? It's not as good as she wants it, but it's not as bad. And we, and we want to jump on the bad. And we want to say, you don't deserve this. You don't do this. Listen, God made the world and everything is good. He looked at it and said, everything is good and everything works in his timing. This is part of the gift. Man, I'm probably going to lose listeners on that one. This is part of the gift. Because once she gets through this, once you got through it, you just made it part of your gift, part of your story. It seemed like the worst thing possible when you were going through it. But if it can ever turn into a gift, it's always a gift. We can't stand there and say to them, oh, man, you're lucky to be having this happen to you right now, right? You'll get cut. But if you go and find the common enemy is the same common enemy the person in pain has, you're fighting the wrong war. And now both of you are engaged, both of you are enlisted in a battle that cannot be won because it was always yesterday. The battle for this woman, the battle for this person is now. The battle for this person is what's coming now the battle for her is what's happening two nows from now and three nows from now can you have the strength to stand in this now and get her focused enough to begin to see what's coming 
because all too often we'll find the common enemy of being able to uh, was it right no did she deserve it no does any human deserve that no the challenge is is that usually they call on people who have some experience in that and the conversation changes to everything was for a yesterday moment conversation there'll be glimpses of conversation of what's to come of what's going to happen the question is you have to understand if she reached out to you you're somebody of importance you're somebody of 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 uh, of a source for her so here's the tough question what will you resource to her think about that folks anybody who ever reaches out to you they are considering you a source what will you resource to them man i got you i know exactly how you feel then they're they're just the biggest a holes and this that and the other you're resourcing an old story of yours is that to make them feel better or you feel better this is everybody i'm not brittany i'm not picking on you this is everybody but this is what happens no you know what so, i'm saying go ahead oh it's crazy because um okay so the background is a little, a little not strange, but the, the, the dynamic is really interesting. I've never met her before a day in my life. And I know her because she's the girlfriend or fiance or Watch wife this. or something. Hang, uh, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So if you've never met her and they're a person that's in your community somehow and she reached out to you. Mm -hmm. This is like reading a line in a book. The question then becomes, have you thought of why she's reaching out to you? Yes. And have you thought of the story that you had to go through or the story that went through her mind why she's reaching out to you? Um, yeah, actually. Okay. <laughs> it's just so crazy because it's like, the, so now, so now that you see the story, you you believe you understand the story of why she reached out to you. I hope, I hope so. I hope okay. I do. What, if, okay. what if it's wrong? But that, but this is what you this is what you need to find out, and this is what we'll find fi you'll find out when you have a conversation, because you'll right. be able to hear it in her voice. She has a story running in her mind of why you're the one that she needs to reach out to. Now she may have reached out to a, a dozen other people, hoping somebody will throw her a lifeline. Has that story run through your head? And if it's not, that's okay. No, it didn't. Okay. So, so picture this. When somebody's drowning and they yell help, do they look at a resume before the help is provided? No. No. So there's a good chance she may have reached out to somebody else. So the first question I would ask her after hello and are you safe is who else have you reached out to? And the, she'll, re she'll reveal some the level of desperation and in that it's I, I i've reached out to a dozen people and what has been the response you're kind of doing if you've ever done triage no right so you're, you're you need to understand where the patient is at right now where this person is at what have they done what are their symptoms what have they reached out to because you could be the nocebo in their life not the placebo you could be the reason that they stay in the hole. I know it's tough. It changes the way, it changes the whole message of, of what just happened. But they might be reaching out to you. Have you ever known anybody who wants to stay stuck in the hole? All of us. It, my point is, is that this is where it, it if you understand how to ask, if you have understood how to work on the questions. Yeah, it is 911. Where are you at? What's the story? When somebody's in that state, when you hear those stories and there's and there's that physical abuse and there's all of that, it is it is it is trauma. Here's the thing. We see this abuse that's happening on the outside. I promise you some of the worst abuse, the, even the more painful abuse happens on the inside and we never see the scars. 
So I would just, I would have a conversation, triage the situation, ask, make sure they're safe. Ask, how can you be of best service? And listen. The hardest part is going to be when you, when you let her know that you're a safe person to talk to because of your similar personal experience is to avoid is to avoid conversations that say i know right i get you i understand that i i, I know exactly because you have to listen you can't if you're going to jump in the hole you can't tell them how many times you've been there before nobody cares how time how many times you've been there before they just want to get out the question is is a tough question is do you want to get out of the hole when we hear people in, that are in abusive relationships, wherever it's from, how many times do we hear them going back to, a, back to it again and again and again? And you're like, that's just crazy. No, it's not. It's how they're wired. It's the only place of safety they can find until it becomes too unsafe to stay. This, is, this happens with every person you're gonna, this is addiction to approval. Because if this has ever happened, listen, if, it, if this is the first time it's happened, she's, she's now 5,000, she's gone. There's a chance that this level of trauma in her life, this is not the first experience. Can I say something? Yes, please. Oh, so I was just thinking about all of this, right? So the... Because she doesn't know, nobody knows actually, unless you are in my very, very, very close immediate circle about the fact that I went through the same experience, right? And it took multiple times before I was like, all right, this is it, you know? Yep. And I also thought about how I... This is a very big test because you know, Sean, like when I tell people to do something and they don't do it, I'd be like, what you mean? You're not, why, why you, what, what you talk to me for this? You know, right. like, if you're not right. going to listen. So I was like, okay, you know, this is, can't, it can't be that type of thing. If she comes to me and I tell her something and I find her back in that situation, I still have to love her enough to coach her enough to give her a little bit more rope every single time she finds herself in this situation right it's like you have to love like a parent it is yeah. but, the, but the difference well, i just is, realized that you know yeah. i'd be like, gone with the wind yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is is with a parent there's a tremendous amount of emotional connection of especially with moms of i don't, I don't want to fail them I don't want to fail them again. And sometimes we can come off kind of harsh with our, and it doesn't seem harsh at all. So I think the reason that you were asked to participate in this, the activity of, of providing help to this person is because her heart may know your heart. Because there's an instant level of rapport that, that spans time and space. Anybody who has ever been in that situation, anybody who's ever had that level of fear placed upon them, there's not a single doctor, there's not a single psychiatrist, there's not a single anybody that can ever, ever speak to that level of fear. So you've been granted a gift and with great power comes great responsibility. It's going to be a, just as important a lesson for her as it is for you. And can you sit with the intent of joy versus misery? And, and be a good listener. And to walk them through the journey, to help them go two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. Because the, the addiction to approval that, that gets broken in abuse, it's an addictive personality. Cigarette smokers become big gum chewers and alcoholics become 
sweet eaters and all of these things, the addiction just moves. Breaking the addiction. That takes a little, that takes a lot of God work. But right now, it's not about a breaking of addiction. It's about bre breaking of I'm, I'm good enough. There's such, there seems to be such a level of lack that shows up. The slightest inflection in a voice. How many times have somebody said something and we're like, that's not what I said, but that's what I heard, right? We become hypersensitive to so many things in a state of fear that even I got you means that I'm going to get you. So I check in on her, make sure she's safe. And then it's going to be a listening process. Yeah, um, so I asked if she was safe, and she basically, I don't want to put this on YouTube. <laughs> okay. But and we can have a conversation safe. offline. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But folks, this is every prospect that sits across from you. We, we consider this trauma, and it is not making anything less of it. But we hear about this abuse that happens and the, sh the shameful thing is, is that abuse is going through the roof right now. And it's, and it's the majority of times it's, it's on the female population, but abuse is going through the roof right now. Because somebody lost their authority and they're not good enough, they take it out on the world. And it's usually their very intimate world. So what if we as a community, what if we as a, as a community of people who give hope, who sell hope, what if we as a community of individuals who have the opportunity to inspire people, who have the opportunity to hear that people are worthy, people are worthwhile, people have value. What if your responsibility today was to go talk to people and make sure they were okay. I mean, seriously, make sure they were okay. Because too many people wait till they're at the end of the rope. And they're not, and, and at the end of the rope, we do crazy things, especially when the rope is on fire. We all have stress. We all have challenges. We're all, we're all faced against new, new obstacles of, of unbelievable things that are happening right now in the world. Can we today, can this community, can you as a misfit on this call today, can you check in on people? Can you make sure somebody's safe that maybe, maybe it's not physical abuse. Maybe it's the mental abuse. And these people become such morphs. They become such ability to morph themselves. And they, and they can, they have their public persona. But when they're in private, when they're in the car crying in the parking lot, before they go in to get groceries, can we check on them? Can we check in with our friends? This is somebody's friend. Listen carefully. This person that reached out to Brittany that she doesn't know, this is somebody's friend who ha may have, say, I have no idea that was going on. Why didn't you tell me? Yeah, that poker face. This is what the end of the month does. Because now all of a sudden we're going to tear off a page on a calendar and month four is gone forever. And people have no plan for month five. They're 60 days into, I don't know what to do. They're 45 days into, oh my gosh, I have no plan going forward. Do you realize what you have to offer? If you can offer it as a place of safety, a place of, a place of love, a place of I got you versus I get you versus I got to get them enrolled. I help, I get to help you change your world. 
Do you realize what $200 a month might do for somebody who's struggling? Somebody who does not have their own money? I agree with you, Delia. I think there, there should be some faith in there. But I got to tell you what, when you're standing in the middle of hell, there is no God for them. When you're standing there in the middle of this tornado, you are praying your ass off. I'm not saying it's a little late to start. It's never too late to start, but they need, they need some physical help now. We've got to get people to a safe place. And sometimes the safest place we can get to somebody is to say, I got you. I got you. Is it okay if I stand in your corner? If you have somebody, listen, type, type a Y in the chat. If you have somebody, if you have somebody who is standing in your corner right now, you're standing in their corner. You're, you're somebody in somebody, you're, you're that person in somebody's corner right now. Type a Y in the chat. Are you that person in somebody's corner? Then guess what? You can, you know what it takes. You know what it takes. You got their back. How many people are afraid? Listen carefully. How many people are going to be afraid to reach out and say, will you get my back? Will you cover me? Will you take care of me? P people will not ask for you to take care of them. They all need it. They all want us in their corner, but they're not going to ask. Yeah. Somebody says in the chat, I, 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 I was exhausted asking when people would turn away. Exhausted. And I, you just, at some point you go, I can't do it anymore. Delia, the people who are who want us in their corner <coughs> are the greatest magicians of all. They will never give you a sign. The ones who need us in their corner, don't they'll they will never give us a sign. How many of us in our own life have ever had a conversation with somebody and said these words? I never knew. I never knew that. And these are people who are close to us. These are friends that we've acquired. And these are some friends we've known for years. And then all of a sudden you hear their story and you sit there with your mouth on the floor going, I never knew that. So let's not be, let's, let, let's not think that, well, they'll give us a sign. They have become so good at masquerading. And that's the challenge with our profession. It's the challenge with our true profession. Let me put it that way. You can get people with masks on in your business like flies to a flame, like moths to a flame. You can get people easy to show up to a party, which pretty quickly turns, the party turns into a procession, and the procession is a march to failure. But if you have the ability to have people come in to have an awakening, see, we don't talk about this in network marketing. Nobody wants to talk about this stuff. It's the mushy stuff. It's the, we just, no, they'll figure it out. Nobody wants to spend this kind of conversation, this down kind of, oh man, what a downer. This is the end of the month. We need to be going out there and we need to be hitting the numbers. You can do that. You can do that. The question is, is can we sit in enough love that that's our resource?
Wow. I'm just reading Diane's story. Yikes. It is hard as a mom. Because here's the thing. You probably felt it the second he heard it. That's that quantum entanglement. You guys are tied together. So here's, so here's the reality. Right now, today, it is the last day of the month. What did Caesar say? Not that anybody wants to hear this statement right now, but you need to hear it. What did Caesar say about the dead? We have to let the dead bury the dead. We can mourn. Absolutely. Mom, you know, you know your son better than anyone. The pain that you, that you feel in your heart is real. But staying there may not serve you or him. So I would encourage you to find a way to be in the joyous states of the memories you have of your son. We can all send Christ Christopher joy. As a matter of fact, if you want to in the chat, send it to Diane so Christopher can receive it. Send joy to Diane. Let Diane know that she's important. Let Diane know that she just inspired us. She just gave us room to give. She just gave us room to love her. We don't know Christopher, but by default we do. This is what network marketing is supposed to be about. This is what MLM is supposed to be about. Me loving more. This is what this industry was for. This was the design behind it. To inspire people, to move people forward, to help them have more of what they want and less of what they don't. When you can help one person out of the hole and stand tall on their own two feet, you've started a new career. Diane, thank you for giving us a chance to, to love on you, to send this emotion that was building up to have an outlet. There's 7 billion people on the world. All of them, but about four need this. And even those four need it. Everybody on the planet needs what just happened here now. <clears throat> they need their story told. We read that story. And we all... Everything changed about our morning. We heard Brittany tell her story. Everything changed about our morning. Here's the reality. Every time we hear a story, our world changes. And what do we have to do? Do we add more pages to that chapter? Or do we help give them a pen to write the next chapter of the new story? Christopher's life is forever changed. Brittany's friend who sent her a message, her life is forever changed. <clears throat> How long will we let them own the old story? Because that's what it is. It, it is now an old story. Yeah, but it just happened yesterday. In this moment, choose joy or misery. This is where the real decision-making comes in. Yeah, but somebody died. I get it. I get it. There's a mourning. There's a loss. But can you not mourn in joy? 
Can you not remember in happiness? Tough topic. But here's what I know. Every person you're about to come across has a story that's just as painful to them as any one of these stories are. And when you sit across from them, realize the responsibility you have to either put them in misery or put them in joy with your words. They may not choose to go to misery. They may not choose to go to joy because the, jo the, the choice is ultimately theirs. But here's what I know. People are looking for one of two things, either a reason to do something or an excuse not to. What do your words inspire them to do? Sharon, I see your hands up. Good morning, my love. You're up bright and early in Vegas. Good morning. It's funny because I, uh, I was dreaming your voice <laughs> and starting this call and being on the call and realized that I was asleep and looked at the time and it was a quarter of it, a quarter of five. And I thought, okay, it's time to try and get up and see what happens to your day if you do this. <laughs> So um, the reason I raised my hand, though, is that yesterday I was sending out all these love notes and saying, how are you? I'm, you know, I'm here for you. And this one guy said, I'm not doing very well. And I wrote back, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, is You know, sometimes it's easier almost to talk to a, to a total stranger, you know, because he didn't really respond very much to what what. And then he wrote back and said, he was getting kicked out of his house today and he lost his job and, you know, and he, and he sounded, you know, like his, my roommate's girlfriend wants me out and she hasn't even met me. You know, yeah, I could hear the tone of voice behind it. And I did, and I realized, oh my gosh, I don't want to drown with this guy. I can't put him up. How do I help him? You know, after I offered to be there for him. And what occurred to me is, my church has just fed like over 2 million people. I mean, it's unbelievable what our church community outreach has been. And I'm sure they must know of resources for people so that they're not totally homeless. But nobody wants to hear about church when they're in a crisis, like you said. And I would love to hear how, and maybe you already did this because I came on late, but I came in in the middle of that conversation and I thought, oh, goody, that's the conversation I need to know how to, how to help this guy without drowning. And uh, so the, the key is, <clears throat> it's not, <clears throat> I was mentioning, it's, it's hard to, con it, it, it's easy to convert an atheist at sea in the middle of a storm. The challenge is, is that if they've, if, if anybody's had faith at all in their life and they're in the middle of this, they, they have a tendency to not be inspired by their faith that seems to have failed them. Now, they will go to a church, they will go to food, they will go to a source in, in the tangible world, but talking about the intangible when people are getting, having right. physical things happening. So it's, and some people, they may just need a, a verse to be the, the thing that changes them. So I believe that that's, it's a time that they probably really need it the most. But then are we well, that one more person? Because if, if somebody has ever had faith and in this moment they've seemed to have lost it and we come back and say, did you read your Bible today? And they're like, yeah, I know I should have been doing that all along, but they're not going to, it's right. So it's that, yeah, I should have, could have, would have. So the first thing is, is how do we get them safe? How do we get their personal reality to help with their personality? Because right now it's, it's in a world of storm. So I would offer the resources of the church. I would offer the resources of, of some place. Because here's the thing, we don't have to jump in the hole. The challenge is, is that our good heart makes us feel like we're, we're the one letting them down. Right. We, well, and and I, I, I left, the note I left last night, since I didn't have any ideas yet, <laughs> was I'm brainstorming resources. Yep. And then I thought today I would 
reach out, I would reach out to somebody I know in the church and say, do we have resources for people who are losing their homes or do you have resources? And if they say yes, then I can give them those physical, tangible resources. Yep. Um, and, and you know, I had offered to jump on, on a call with him, but, he, and I wondered if he does just need to vent, if that's a, if I should be that, because I, I also don't want to go, oh yeah, you know, woe is me. Yep. Um, so maybe I could just <clears throat> get, give him the physical resources in, in, the, in the same text chat and say, if you'd like to talk about this, give me a call or something like that, or just. Yeah. And, and again, the key is, the key is we've been, we've all been, a couple of things happen when energy like this shows up in our life. It, it shows up to catapult us or to capture us. It can catapult us to the, I can, I can talk to you in the hole. I can get down in the hole. I'm going to be getting out of the hole. And you can follow me. I will show you exactly the way out. What you do once you're out of this emotional helpless state is up to you. So the biggest challenge that we have is we want to jump down in the hole and we want to sit there and cry with them. That doesn't serve either of you. And this is for any situation. When, if you jump down in the hole with him, if you have a conversation with him, say, listen, what's your next step? I don't know. That's an interesting answer. Let me ask the question again. What's your next step? Well, I got to do this. Great. When can you get that done? Because remember, when they're in this state of trauma, they lose their prefrontal cortex. You, one of the things that when you, when you under, uh, deal with trauma, it's why the 911 operators ask you, where are you at? Do you know a location? What, what, where are you at in the house? They ask you these physical things so that your brain comes out of trauma and it gets you to, to use your prefrontal cortex, which shuts down the amygdala just long enough for you to be able to have a conversation. You hear some of those things where they're just screaming, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. The prefrontal cortex has them shut off. So if you deal with anybody in these, in these tra traumatic moments, Ask them conversations that seem, well, I, that seems stupid to ask. Ask them if they know their phone number. Ask them anything. Do they know what date it is? What time is it where you're at? You could be in the, you, they could be in the house next door to you. What time is it where you're at? How many of you looked at your clock right now when I said, what time is it? There's simple things we can do to activate, to reactivate the prefrontal cortex, to activate the thinking mind. Because we all know when people get into tragedy, when people get into these situations, when your prospect is sitting across from you and seems to be non-responded or seems to be answering things with a very generic answer, their amygdala has fired up. Yeah, they don't teach you this in, in the course you bought online for $497. They don't want you to know this. They don't, maybe they don't even know to tell you this, they probably don't. Because if you knew this, you would never have to buy another prospecting course ever again. You could sit in the middle of trauma with a prospect who seems like they're all together. They're the business person who's sitting there in a suit across from you who had a $7 million a year business who's got a gun in their car and is ready to go home and blow their brains out. But because of you, the one who listened to him, you saved their life and you'll never know it. I, and I, <clears throat> I guess for me, it's like, if somebody reaches out to me, I feel more resourceful than I reached out to him as like, ah, what did I do? What, what Pandora's box did I open? <laughs> you opened the one that God had a test for you for. Didn't, and in the past, didn't... I would have just kind of run totally from it because... I don't, I don't know what to do, but I, I, I want to do, you know, I, I want to step into this challenge. So, so here's the thing. Let's, let's without go. drowning. I don't have, I don't have no. the, I'm not no. willing uh, to here, go down there. Do, do me a favor. Say, say, tell me if you can say the, this word, I'm going to say a word and, and see if you can repeat it. I can't help you. Can you say that? I can't help you. 
Yeah, that's the one that breaks our heart. But sometimes, listen, when the disciples were left and they sent out and they said, go, go disciple the world, were there people that maybe still threw eggs? Were there people that still didn't agree? There's still people today that don't agree. It's okay. The test, there's a test for both of you. Yeah, yeah there are two other women <clears throat> that uh, reached out to me that said, you know, they're about to be home. It's the about to be homeless part that seems to trigger something inside me. I've yep. never been homeless, yep. but I, I've, I've been close if I didn't have my family, you know? So let me, so let me let you in on a little secret. Let me, I'm just going to poll the audience. Has anybody here on this call ever been homeless? If you've ever been homeless, type an H. And I'm not talking about down on the street under the bridge homeless, but maybe you've had to live in a car. So I want you to see all the people that are on here, Sharon, that have been homeless. And, so, and I would put an H up there too. For three years, I was homeless. It ain't that bad. <laughs> so I want, yeah, you to, my... I want you to see the strength that people have, but I want you to know that's not your responsibility. You can be responsible to them. It, the hard part is to cut it off at responsible for them. Yeah. And this is the lesson that we need if we learned how to be responsible to our prospects and not for them. Then, then I would explode. I, I absolutely get that. I think and, that's why I'm willing to. And to, that's the test. That's the yeah. waters you're about to swim in. You can say, I've done all I can for you. Let me know if I can do any more because this is all I can do. Because when people start to run off on a tangent and they start to talk about what they, what they need help with and what, listen, here's the resources I have. I only have a, a limited amount of sources. Love you, Anne. Thank you for being here. And, and one last thing I'd like to say here, Sean. Yes. I, that conversation that I had that Sunday, a, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, <laughs> has completely transformed me. I am completely different since that conversation. And every single day I wake up differently as a result of it. <laughs> and, it and as I'm sitting here, I'm looking out the window and the sun is rising the most incredible colors. But I'm sitting here in more joy and more aliveness and more hope and more presence than I have ever felt in my life day after day after day after day. And I, my sister's stuff is, is rolling off my back and I'm just able to say, I love you, I love you. And she's, she's getting it in a different way. And she, she loves you too by, because of she's heard what I'm going through. <laughs> But she, she's afraid to jump on, the, on a conversation with you because she has a relationship with God and she doesn't want to be told, told to, she should be with Jesus. And I understand that because I spent my whole life like that. But boy, what a difference it would, have, would make for her. But, but it's not, it's not going to happen. But at some point, she is going to want to meet you when she can. And, and when she does it, it'll be, it'll be a God-given gift for me. Well, I just, I can't tell you all how much I appreciate you. And I'm not exactly sure what happened. I even re-listened to that to see if it would help me understand what happened. It doesn't matter what happened. All I know is it happened. And all I know is that I love Kayla to the moon and back. <laughs> I don't think she's on this call. And I love you um, and all of you on this call. So I'm, I'm going to step up to the plate today without drowning. Yep. I can do it. Give them all the life preservers. Give them all. Listen, Sharon, you got to see the sunrise, right? <laughs> is it possible for them to have seen the same sunrise and been in the same amount of joy? The answer to that is yes. The sun will rise and the sun will set. What we take part in is our responsibility. What they take part in is their responsibility. 
can we turn them and say, look at the sun? No, but you don't see the fires over here from yesterday. And enjoy that as often as you can if you, need, if you need some help with that. But I won't throw any more kindling. I won't throw any more wood or gas on your fire. And, and that's like with this whole, I mean, Vegas is shut down. Vegas is a party town and it's shut down. It's, it's going to feel the effects of it. And people have all these black and white answers about, you know, businesses should reopen. And I'm sitting here going, I don't have any answers whatsoever except to do my life and to love on people and to offer my business as a, as a, as a side gig. But I don't have the answers. And I don't pretend to, and I don't pretend to understand all the ins and outs because it's very hard to see what's the, the real truth behind all the si sound bites that are out there. Yep. So I don't even try. It's not, it's not, that's not my cool. That's not my Kuleana, as they would say in Hawaii. Yep. So here's what we've learned so far today. Brittany said it. I can't believe there's so many people who have a similar story. This story is everywhere in the world. I see Joyce on here, uh, my dear friend from Africa. She, would, she could tell you a thousand and one stories like this. She could share with you, she has 200,000 people in her organization. She could st tell you story after story and for her to stand strong and for her to still lead and for her to lead from the front. Can you imagine the thousands of stories that she gets every day? And her response is, all we can do is help them, but you've got to take care of you first, right? On the plane, we hear it all the time. Put your oxygen mask on first. And especially ladies, hear my heart. There's this sacrificial model that you've been designed to hear from maybe your mom and your grandmom and your grandmom's grandmom that we just don't do that. That's not a lady thing. That's not this. You, you can't stand up for this. You, you don't do, listen. You've got to take care of you. Dalai Lama said the world will be saved by the Western woman. I think we just take the word Western out. And I think the more that, that you can communicate with each other and support each other from a place of love and honor and respect. Because when you have a, a ride or die kind of relationship, ladies, it is fierce. It is fierce, that relationship. So it's a tough topic. Didn't, didn't plan on it, but I don't plan on these things. These are, these are downloads from someplace much smarter than me. I'd ask you today to take some time to just be present, to just find. So here's, so here's what just downloaded to me now. If any one of these stories has, has struck you, has hit a chord with you, Brittany's story of a friend who they just, they've just become acquaintances through the digital world and somebody reaches out. Diane's story about her son losing her, his friends in a helicopter crash. If any of these stories touch you, of Sharon's story of somebody saying they, they reached out to them and they said, yeah, things are okay. But then in the next text, they say, I'm losing my house in the morning and I don't know where to go. If any of these stories have touched your, your cords and your heart, I'm going to ask you to listen to me for just another moment. It means it's time for you to fill your tank because these requests are going to come more often and more often and more often and more often. What do you mean fill my tank? Find your source. In my uh, devotional this morning, I, I read it just before the call started. I had already had the topic, but it says this. <clears throat> when some basic need is lacking, hmm, what is the basic need that is lacking in just about everybody you're going to have a conversation with right now? What's the basic need that's lacking? Joy authority, control, money, food, time, energy, money. Consider yourself blessed. 
Your very lack is an opportunity to latch on to me in unshamed dependence, unashamed de dependence. This is my daily devotional. When you begin the day with inadequate resources, you must concentrate your efforts on the present moment. It's almost as if they knew I needed this conversation this morning. This is where you are meant to live, in the present. It is the place where, I'm, where I always await you. Awareness of your inadequacy is a rich blessing, turning you to rely wholeheartedly on me. The truth is that self-sufficiency is a myth perpetrated by pride and temporary success. Health and wealth can disappear instantly, as can life itself. Rejoice in your in insufficiency, knowing that my power is made perfect in weakness. Now, this is all about a source. I have a name for that source. You may call it something different. But when somebody is in these, in these dire straits, when we are down and out, <clears throat> funny how we seem to make it through. Some of us have been through a hell storm. Some of us might be standing at the gates of it. Some of us might be in the middle of it and not sure which way is out. You might be the voice on the other side of those, that hell that somebody's going through right now and say, you can come this way. You can be a voice for somebody. You can be that, that light for somebody. But once they get out, it's their responsibility to take care of them. They're going to have to make the next move. We can't go lift the weights for them. We can't make the calls necessary for them. But we can be present with them. We can see if they have enough, uh, enough energy to pay attention to this moment, to do some actions. It's tough. It's, it's not easy. When somebody goes from a guilt perspective into a shame perspective, shame is I'm the problem, guilt is I need to do something. Sometimes the best things we can do is get somebody into a guilt stage. Now, I'm talking to you about things at a, at a psychological level, at a, at, a, at a chemical production in the brain. Because it happens for both. Every time we heard a story this morning, every one of our brains heard it. Not a single word entered into our cranium. Not a single one of us took an outside drug that caused us to be in pain with the story. It all happened on an internal level. It all happened at a, a neurochemical level <clears throat> in the brain that, sent, that created chemicals made inside your brain to change your emotional state. That's the power you have. You are a pharmacy of success and some of the stories we hear or of disaster. What prescription will you help somebody find today? You can write them the prescription. I get on this call every morning and write prescriptions. Joy or misery. I choose to hope I give out more joy prescriptions. Any of us ever get a prescription for a, for a painkiller and we don't want to take it? Or um, we're supposed to take the antibiotics for, for, for its entire course, 10 days, but on day seven, we don't take it and it comes back. And the doctor goes, you didn't take it all. Now they got to give you a stronger one. Jada, I see your hand up. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very good, Jada. Um, thank you for um, calling on me. Um, you actually answered my question with Sharon. Okay. So um, I wrote down my question. Well, I have another one as well, but um, I, you know, you, I wrote down my question so that I could ask it the right way. Sure. Um, but it, at first it was just, I have, um, I have been practicing finding balance between loving people and doing business. I would like to learn how to become better at 
balancing that. Um, and then you kind of answered my question with, you know, taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I kind of see that what I'm doing in my business, I'm actually, I, I, I watch what words I say mm -hmm. and how I say them. So when someone is telling me their story, I will say, you know, I, uh, you will heal here. Like I'll say things like that instead of, you know, saying, I don't know, <laughs> but my right. next question for you is, um, I'm practicing genuine urgency. Um, so do you have any advice on how to practice this? Like an urgency to, you know, take action. Right. Urgency, urgency is man-made. Mm -hmm. Because what you consider urgent, I may consider futile. Uh -huh. So urgency is, is, a, is, a, is a, one of the 35,000 emotions that we create to justify our current state of mind. Okay. So when we, when we decide to create urgency, urgency should turn into internal motivation. And the only, okay. urgen the only urgency that anyone has is to be in joy. Let me explain. God forbid somebody yesterday falls down in front of you with a heart attack. What's the first thing they're going to do? Call out for help, try to get help. Right. So which means that if, if they call out for help, they're wanting to get into joy. Yeah. And so then that's how they scream. Somebody called 911. Somebody says, I called 911. They're in a new level of joy. They know that help is on the way. Then it's all a matter of will they get will the help get here fast enough? And then when the help shows up and the and the paramedics show up, it's a new level of joy. They get them to the hospital, it's a new level of joy. The mm -hmm. only urgency that anyone has is to move into joy. We don't see it that way. We see it as misery as well. But if you realize that anybody taking an action in any direction is a desire to move to joy. How could there ever be any urgency then? It's just a yeah. desire. Will they give up the old story? See, because somebody, right? We see in the movies, we see in the, 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 I, I just picture a movie where it's the wife wants to kill the husband and all of a sudden he dies in front of her because she poisoned something. She says, well, I'll call the ambulance in about four minutes. And you're like, oh, what a cold witch on a broomstick. So we can, and, and in that moment, we see it like, well, call, call, call. And it's like, no, 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 I want, I want this to happen. The only thing that we can ever do, so there is never an urgency. The urgency is man-made. Like him in the back, sitting in the back seat there, that little bundle of joy. His urgency is to have to, <laughs> yeah. to throw his arms around and to, and to laugh and giggle. That's his urgency. And as soon yeah. as you let him out of that seat, man, he is free. Unless, of course, he's going to get ice cream. Then he's like, get me in the seat. <laughs> the, the only thing we can do is when we have a conversation with somebody is to help them with a very urgentness, if that's even a word, to get to joy. So your first question is, okay. is how, do I balance, how do I balance love and business? You don't. You're either going to be all love or all business, because if you're trying to balance that between the two, your business is going to come and go, come and go. I would encourage you to just keep stay in joy. And the method that you have to stay mm -hmm. in joy is to help people find their financial freedom. Okay. Thank you. That helps so much. You're welcome. I appreciate your help. You bet. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks, Jada. Vach, go ahead. You got a quick comment and then uh, we're going to wrap this up. Yes, I did have a quick comment. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Vach. <laughs> um, I wanted to just start with like, well, I just sitting back and listening to everything like on the call mm -hmm. was just, it's just amazing how like things go. Um, things are so unexpected because when we first started the call out, you were about to say something completely different. And then Brittany's like, I need this right now. And that ended up turning the course of the call. And it just kind of shows like how raw and authentic it is here because we're all able to share these different stories with one another and relate to them. But 
still be like, okay, well, guess what? You know, we have to get out of that old story. And when we're talking to our prospects, get them out of that old story as well, but make sure that you're proceeding with caution for you and for them. So I just wanted to comment and say that, um, that it was just like beautiful to see the direction of the conversation go from one thing to something that no one was expecting to happen on this call, you know? So that was pretty much it. <laughs> well, Vach, I appreciate that. And here's the, here's, so I'm going to give us all a little, a chance of a mentorship moment here. The only reason that these things happen on this call, and this is me going to tout a little bit, is because that's the test I'm given every day. You guys come here and you sit and you watch me have these conversations and you see me uh, manipulate language, have a, have, a, have a dialogue with language and use language in such a way that it's this, this amazing sword that cuts through doubt and fear. It's because I just, I do my best to stay present. When I see somebody, when I see anybody say, I have an emergency, I need help. There's not a single thing that I could say that's important enough to say, well, I will get to that especially when it's one of you, one of my friends. So this is just my years of experience that allow me the opportunity to say, listen, all I can do is all I can do. And there's a good chance that there's probably something I can do to give you guidance because of my 54 years of experience, because of my Yoda-ness. <laughs> but here's the reality. This call is going to end in just a little bit. And we are all going to go about our days and these people might still be in pain. Could you imagine? I'm going to go a little biblical here. Could you imagine God or Jesus or the creator of the universe to see all of this pain? Could you imagine how like, why, why are they there? Why are they in that state? It's because of temptation. The temptation is to stay in that state. You sh I would encourage you to all listen to Napoleon Hill's conversation with the devil. You might be surprised at how many places the devil has in, the, in that conversation. Uh, and, it's, and it's just this idea of how we are taught that it's okay to depend, to depend on something other than ourselves and our source. I didn't care. Maybe that's the message for today. Go listen to Napoleon Hill's conversation with the devil. It's on YouTube. You don't have to buy it. You can read it along as they talk about it. I think it's three hours. It might be some of the best three hours you could do right now because we are all going to be tempted. We are all going to be tempted to, to not live our dream because right now the test is in our testimony and every one of us outwitting the devil. Yeah. That's it. RBP, how are you doing this morning? Well, now I know why I'm doing what I'm doing this morning. <laughs> <clears throat> I've been up since probably about three o'clock this morning. You look a little, a little ragged. <laughs> Completely unsettled. Holding back all kinds of emotions right now. Tears and everything. I have... I kept asking, what is all this from? Because I sat in a place of pure service yesterday uh, with a friend having a crisis. And I was there on the morning call. And <laughs> thank you, Jessica. And a complete service day to a friend. And I was still able to pop in and out of teamwork and things like that. And so when I came home, it was, if you could say it was a good day, it was a good day. I've had curveballs thrown at me the last few days and everything seems fine. And then at three o'clock this morning, it's like, what in tarnation has happened? And I guess I'm feeling all y'all. I guess I'm, and I don't mean this in a bad way. I guess I'm more connected to all of y'all than I realized I was. <laughs> and, and I have been, kind of wrestling with it all night 
all morning this morning. I have been praying. I've been praying over all of y'all. I've been praying over myself. I've been asking questions. So I feel an unsettledness around. And um, it was funny because Sean and I couldn't even connect last night. And his phone died. And <laughs> thank you, Manny. And it was just bizarre. It was a bizarre evening and this morning. So your source is huge and I know my source and that's all I've got. And even those things that you think you can, you know, Sean, yeah, he's a flipping master, but you know what? If Sean, God forbid, if Sean wasn't here tomorrow, what would you do? What would you do? And I thought, you know what? Do we go from person to person as our source? And then we wonder, man, why do we get let down? And I'm not saying Sean let me down at all. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying, are we going from person to person? Because Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Delia. Because if you're going from person to person, you're missing the, you're missing the boat. Because people are going to let you down. Always. I'll let you down. Sean will let you down. Anybody will let you down. So where's your source? Because la this morning at three o'clock in the morning, when I could hear every sound in the house and I could hear every one of y'all's hearts and I could hear turmoil and chaos and confusion. And if I didn't have my source, I wouldn't be able to sit here right now. And I wouldn't be able to speak life over you. So I am, I'm speaking life over, over every one of you. And I'm praying over every one of you. And I love every one of you. And you have someone in your corner, spiritually, fighting for you. And y'all need to know y'all are my therapy. And I won't stop praying for y'all. So help those people. The side effects of helping people is joy. <laughs> The side effects of helping people is love. So center yourself, find your source, define happiness and joy and stick to that definition. And don't be lured away from that definition for any reason. Because then you can get woke up at three o'clock in the morning and the Holy Spirit can go, I need you on the floor now. You're up sister. And you can go, all right, let's go. Rhonda so, Parker to line four. Rhonda Parker <laughs> to line four. Yeah. And it's never with a warning. It's never, hey, tomorrow, this is what I'm going to call it. No, it's never that. But I love y'all. You have everything you need inside of you. If you need some extra, reach out to me. Do not reach out to me if you're going to prospect me or try to get me into your business or I ain't going to try to do that to you either. Reach out to me for your heart. I will guide you in a place where you don't need me to help you any further. But I love y'all, each one of y'all. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for being a part of my life. I just, y'all are on my heart today. I love y'all. I'll keep praying. So now that you hear that, now that you feel that, what changes in your world? Because this was happening before she said it. Y'all know that now. Some of y'all knew that before. I knew that. This is, this is the responsibility we have to ourselves. To sit in joy. To be able to be there for somebody. Because you will get called out. You will get called to the floor. <clears throat> the challenge is, is when you get called to the floor, have you gone there with a winning attitude? Have you gone there knowing that there's nothing that can beat you? This is what we get to do. This is what we need to do as leaders. This is what people come into our community for. 
whether they're front level to you or 600 levels down. If you decide who you're going to work with in your organization based upon where they are in your pay rank, you got some learnings to do and you will get some testing to make sure it relieves you of that idea of commission conversation. The world is hurting right now. You are its warriors. You are its warriors. And your world doesn't have to be my world. Listen carefully. Your world does not have to be my world. I love Joyce and I love everything about her. I love every cell in her amazing body. It's her world. If she calls me into it, I'm there. If I call her into it, she shows up here to be a part of this conversation. She doesn't have to. She gets to. She inspires me every single day. I watch what she does. And the stories, it, listen, y'all think you got stories? <laughs> I, I put a quarter in Joyce and let her go. <laughs> you will hear stories that we will all just go, you know what? I, it ain't that bad over here. I promise you, nothing is... Let me remove the splinter out of your eye, but I ain't going to look at the plank in my own. Mm. We all have, and, and listen, and their stories and the stories that you could hear from Africa, they're pretty common. So it's really not that big of a, a story. It's just everybody's this way. Let's move them out. Let's move them forward. Do you ever hear the convert? Do you ever hear the phrase first world problems? My, 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 my iPhone 72 died. I don't have a battery for it. First world problem. Yes. Right? So what if we get to the heart world problems? People are just missing out on joy. We have the greatest opportunity on the planet to feed them joy. Feed them our community. Listen, if somebody wants to come in and lean up against the, the rowing machine or the, the stair climber and say, I'm going to get on this one day and I'm going to work out, love them for being in your community. Many of you get on this call and, and don't ever say a word. I love you. You don't have to say a word. Your support, your energy, your mission, your vision, your smile, your joy you're typing in the chat is absolutely critical for all of our success. You play an important role. Don't ever leave this call and go, I should talk more. I, do, I don't know why I don't talk. You're speaking with the greatest voice you have, your presence. <coughs> if your word has to be heard, it ain't your word. When you show up in joy, when you show up in presence, when you show up in prayer, when you show up in just gratitude, what more do you have to say? Good morning, Adeloise. I have a question regarding that because I'm a giver by nature. And so I'm in a situation right now, still going through the storm. But I still want to help other people. Yes. However, sometimes I find myself in a position where I'm afraid to help others because I don't want them to get sucked into my storm. And even though I try to go about, you know, everything with the sense of joy, there's times when I can just get knocked off my high horse like that quick. And I don't want anybody to go down that rabbit hole with me. Okay. So... Do you ever hear the story about the um, admiral on, on the ship talking to the first class private? Do you ever hear that story they, they, they talk about in leadership school? Yeah. Guy, guy, guy gets on the radio. They're on this, this huge aircraft carrier. You know, an aircraft carrier is huge, right? And, he, and the, the guy who's at the helm, the uh, radio operator says, uh, a vessel to the, to the port side of the USS cargo carrier aircraft um, please change your direction. And the, and the radio comes back going, um, aircraft carrier, uh, I would recommend you turn 90 degrees. 
right? You now heard this story. You remember it? I'm going to finish it out just so for the story. And he says, uh, excuse me, uh, vessel to the right. This is the aircraft carrier. Uh, we're going to recommend you change your course. He goes, uh, aircraft carrier, uh, I'm going to recommend you turn hard starboard 90 degrees. And then the captain's hearing this. And he says, wait a minute. This is the captain of the USS cargo aircraft carrier. Um, I'm going to command you to turn your vessel. He says, I'm private first class Smith. I'm a lighthouse. So here's, here's my question. Here's my response to you, Adeloise. You can't get down into their mess. If you're the lighthouse, you're not the storm. And here's the thing. If you're, if you happen to be somebody on that aircraft carrier right now in the storm, Find your lighthouse. Find that somebody you can send to the lighthouse. Find that somebody that you can say, hey, listen, I, I need to turn this over to you. And those people should help you. Those people should be there for you. Because this isn't all about you, what you have to do, because you still have to take care of you. But can you be the lighthouse and go, I'd go over there. <laughs> yeah, I just don't want to let anyone down. because You won't. You can't if you're not responsible for them. You can be responsible to them. Right? You remember when the babies were little and they pooped their pants? <laughs> Got one right here. <laughs> right. So when they poop their pants, they're like, enjoy until it's not joy. And then we have to change it for them. You're responsible for, for them right now. But if, I, if I'm a 54-year-old guy and I, all of a sudden something happens to me, you got to take care of yourself. Oh, look who shows up. Look at that beautiful smile. So all I'm going to ask you to do yes. <laughs> is to allow some folks to help you be your source, to be your resource, to be your resource. Just say, I can't help you, but I can, I can put you in touch with people that can. You're the 911 operator. Not a single 911 operator has ever showed up on the front line, but they are, be, they are in front of the front line. Yeah. So just, just be the operator. In the ER, so yeah. I'm familiar. So just be that person that says, listen, I can only do this. Go to room four. We'll get this, and I'll get all of the sources over there, and you'll be taken care of. But get your butt into room four and let the people in room four take care of that. And that's going to be a hard part because you haven't been able to depend on, on folks in room four. Find out if you can depend on those folks in room four. Just give them some tests. Does that help? Yeah, it does. Okay. Y'all send some love to Adeloise. <laughs> I guess I can't be the one to save everyone. You can't, but you can, you can give, you can give them a chance to save themselves. This is what we get to do every day, folks. This is what I wake up. This is what I go to sleep dreaming about. This is what I go up. I wake up waking about. This is what I eat tuna fish waking about or a steak sandwich waking about or, or having a glass of water thinking about. What, what can we do to be more present? What can we do as a community to be such a source that people are drawn to us so that they can use us as a resource. Each of you are wildly important. You're wildly important to me. You heard how important you are to Rhonda. Listen, Joyce, who's sitting in Africa right now, my dear, dear friend, you're all important to her. Joyce, how are you doing this morning, my lover, this afternoon? I'm cool. How you doing? <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear that? With all of this, yeah, man, I'm cool. Hello, my love. Cool. It's um, cool here. Yeah. Yeah. So, how are you feeling about the days that are yet to come? How are you in this world of opportunity, um, creating ideas and and conversations of freedom for people? What, I mean, how can you, how do you sit there knowing that you've impacted almost 
a quarter of a million people and probably have impacted over a million people because they all have families. How, how do you sit there when somebody comes to you and says, I can't do this? What do you say? How do you inspire? What do you do to help move people forward? The starting point is always to let them see that they can do it. It's actually shine the light back on them so that um, start the conversation going so that they really get to believe in themselves. And you know, Sean, for how it is we do it in Africa is not how, like how you do it in America. Because to start up an entrepreneur in, um, in Africa, they don't even have the $20 to start. $20 for you in America is a meal. $20 in Africa, he has to save for it. It's, it's five days of wages. So for getting this kind of person who cannot raise the $20 to sign up or to start up is to actually show them that they already have a resource, even if not in the money value, that they can actually go to the marketplace and um, give them the strength first to believe in themselves, then go to the marketplace to find a customer and off the customer sales to get the profit, then to sign up on profit. It's not in any network marketing book. It's not in any multi-level marketing book that they can sign up on a profit. So that's the way, uh, that, that was my, my creativity to figure out how do I get people in Africa to do network marketing, which is nowhere listed on the books this way. So that is how I started them on. That they go get a customer, bring the customer to the office. The customer buys the product you know, discreetly inside there, we've hidden the profit, which is about 30% retail profit. And then off the profit, the young person can now go and sign up, sign up and get some profit back home. Then they believe, you know, it's to first of all, build the belief on the instant. Otherwise, you're not going to get the young person to come on. So it's really um, getting them to believe in themselves, on their capability, on their capacity, and then to now start to build them for the long term or for the long haul. A majority of them are young people, probably just left high school. Some don't have college education. Uh, most of them come from the informal sectors, you know, inf informal settlements. They're not living in what you'd call a good home, good house. You know, you're, you guys in America live in heaven. Let me tell it to you that way. You're living in a little beautiful heaven. You know, for, for this person, $20 is his monthly house rent. $20 is his entire month's shopping. So it's a totally different world. And to now build them to that point where they can eventually now stand on their own and uh, ultimately become leaders in their different countries because I just didn't work in my country, Kenya. I've built my business in Ethiopia, which is uh, way poorer than Kenya uh, by, by income per, uh, per capita per person. I've built my business in Somalia. If you know about Somalia, it's permanently at war. Uh, Djibouti, Eritrea has not known peace all these years. I have people in Israel. So if you look at the African, uh, the setup in Africa is totally different from what you people are enjoying out there in America. You guys are in first world, we're in third world. And uh, being in third world has its, how do I say it? We have... We have our strengths and our character, but we also have the advantage of um, knowing that we're now going to be the first world going into the future. You know, if you look at the situation we are in right now, you guys have taken the brand of the, of the COVID, I think, bigger than we have. It hasn't yet come in this way. Um, God is on our side, number one. The weather is on our side. We don't even know what the other factors are. I think really... We, we are just sitting here and saying we have no answer or no explanation for the way things are. My country, Kenya, now has about four, less than 400 cases so far. We don't even know the answer. We don't even know why it is the way it is, but we want to pray that it stays that way. That's our prayer. Let it stay that way. We don't have the capacity. We don't have the muscles. We don't have the know-how to deal with it. Um, so now we're working from home. That's the other thing. And now when you tell my people to work from home, my population does not have a smartphone. Smartphone, you know what you've just said, uh, Sean, that your, your iPhone 7 Plus is not working or iPhone 13, 15 Plus is not working. 
you know, let me show you what most mobile phones look like. This is a really advanced one, you know. If you find my guys with one of this, this is pretty, really, really technical, you know. It's not a smartphone, but most of my people are working with these ones. It opens up at the back, you know. It doesn't, the battery falls off at any time. You know, those are the standard mobile phones that people have here. What you forgot using 10 years ago, people still use those uh, $10 mobile phones here. So when we're told to go and work from home, he cannot afford internet uh, from home because monthly internet is about $30. Is it $30? Yeah, about $30. 3,000 shillings, about $30. Uh, so if you tell him to buy internet, but he doesn't have a smartphone, so he cannot be on smartphone. So that's the thing I'm now having to work with now, which is uh, how do I still work my business? How do I still do my profession uh, with, with people who cannot get online. I can get online. Some of my leaders can get online, the ones you see on the group now. Some of my African leaders can get online. But the bigger numbers don't yet have smartphone. They don't have $20 to sign up. So they still hadn't yet built themselves up to buy a smartphone. Or even if they have a smartphone, they don't have the, the internet um, money to get online. So that's the way it is. I like it. How many of you just looked at your business and said, my, my, my excuses are gone. This is why I love Joyce. We met nine years ago on a stage in China. And here's the fun thing. I was speaking at that event, but Joyce is the one who led the event for me in my heart. She came up on stage and she made a commitment from that day. And she said, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And I think every one of those have come true. And, they a, have. Whole, and a whole bunch more. But this is the yeah. power of strong women. Yeah. We need you. You have somebody who's on the other side of the world who has built an organization of teaching people how to not have excuses and has built a community. I only say the number because it might impress some of you. 200,000 people who have been able to get, turn that $20 into $100 a month, five months worth of pay in one month because they serve people. The only way those 200,000 people are doing it is because they're doing it in service. They're doing it in service to their family and service to themselves. And the ones who do it to, to take wind up not in the business. That's 200,000 in the business. You know how many people have come and gone through that business? A lot more. Yeah. So when we think of today and we think of the challenges and we think of the opportunities we have and we think of where, where do we donate? We, we want to donate to Africa. Joyce is saying, don't send your money here. Send your leadership here. Send your mentorship here. My people don't need money. They don't need a fish. They need to be taught how to fish. And this is our chance. This is why Joyce is, listen, we haven't, we, we've communicated, we've, we've fallen in love again more every day, every day, every day. But now, now it's us building this global empire of people who take care of themselves. And that's what I'm honored to be here with Joyce. I will give her the spotlight every single day. Her leaders need to know that she deserves to stand on stage on any stage in this world and lead and inspire and move other women, move other souls to be able to have more, do more. When you talk about the Mother Teresa's of the world, well, here's Mother Teresa of the business world, 200,000 people. And guess what? Do you see her slowing down? I don't. Okay. <laughs> you see that smile? It's like, everything's yeah. cool. Let's get your butt in here and let's go. <laughs> Joyce, I love you so very much. I'm so love you too, Sean, big time. I just, you're just this amazing soul. And and Rhonda, what do you want to say to Miss Joyce? Miss Joyce, it's a pleasure and an honor to know you. And you know, we may be on different continents, but we serve the same God, Amen. and we can lock arms spiritually in a in a realm that knows no boundaries. And we can rise our people up in prayer and we can hold them up before our Lord and we can guide them the way they we're guided to show them and to love them and to show them the love of God. And I'm so thankful that that young man 
in Ghana was able to be connected with you. And I never have to worry about what kind of leadership he has at his opportunity. And I pray for him and I continue to pray for you. You are a remarkable woman. You, it's a woman like you that makes me proud to be a woman. Thank you, and my dear. Yes, I honor you. I, I honor you. I want you to know how much I respect you, how much you mean to the world, and that what you're doing is unbelievable. It does not go unnoticed. And I can only hope one day that I can rise up to that level of womanhood in my lifetime. I, I sincerely appreciate you. I love you. Thank you so much for showing up on this call. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Love you right back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank well, you. there you go, folks. <clears throat> From around the world into your home. <clears throat> from around the universe and into your heart, we get to share the stage together, all of us. You are all on a call this morning listening to a global mentor. And you are on this call listening to people who are, who are changing the world with every breath that they have in their body. And you are on this call and you got to listen to a woman who one day said, I've had enough. And because of that, hundreds of thousands of people in her country. Charity starts at home in her country. She could have easily built someplace else, but she said, no, my country deserves success. My country deserves success. She started with her own village. She started with her own town. And then she said, my country. Oh, wow. And now she has it in the world. Her world deserves success. And she's not gonna stop. I dare anybody who thinks they're strong enough to stop Miss Joyce. I dare you. Look at that smile showing up there. I love you. Oh, my God. Love you more. This is what we get to do. These are my friends. I get to share them with you. They now become your friends. And together, we can make the world a better place. Together in prayer, in peace, in joy, in tears, we can make the world a better place. I'd encourage you to go do that today. Today is the day you get to rise up. Today is the day you get to stand tall. Today is the day you get to be that inspiration for somebody. Today is the day you get to see, you get to say, they make $20 a month in Africa and people are starting their business. Don't you have the desire to have your own success? Is today the day? Don't let your business be run by a calendar. Let your business be run by your heart. And therefore it matters not what time it is. It matters not what day it is. It matters the state you are in. And if you're in the state of joy, we can all have more. I'm Sean Murphy, founder of Mental Profits. I love each and every one of you misfits. I'll see y'all where? Next and event. Send some love to each other. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love you. Love you. Love you. Yeah, I'm a misfit Love first getting up at 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> love you Love, guys. joy, and love happiness. Guys, love y'all. So have a blessed day. <laughs> I love you all. Yes.